So we have taken care of the attendance certificate and, and just let's give him, uh, well, the, the two of them, let's give Jace and, and tell me your name again, young lady. Julia. Julia. Let's give Jace and Julia a big round of applause. As most of you all know, well, we've been here to Hilton, well, it used to be the Double Tree. Uh, last year, we had a absolute nightmare uh, with trying to uh, record the conference and dispense it around the United States and even outside the United States. The uh, people that I had a contract with, they called me about two weeks before the conference and, and said, you know, uh, we are not going to be able to do this. And so two weeks trying to find uh, audio, visual, IT experts. And, and so we weren't able to properly publish it on the website, uh, but this year will do justice. And so from now on, like the Hilton has become the permanent home uh, Jace is a, a dear friend. Uh, we attend Bible study together and uh, spend a lot of time together. Great guy. And most of you all may know his dad, Jim Carnes. And so, but I uh, want to thank the two of you for doing such a wonderful job. And, and I know the editing will probably be, uh, you'll probably complete the editing work by midnight tonight. <laughs> No, 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 it, it takes, it takes, well, Dr. Sutton, when he recorded or published the conference, uh, he used to spend anywhere from, gosh, 20 to 30 hours editing, so, but we appreciate all of the hard work, the excellent job, and, and so just uh, kudos, and really appreciate you guys, and, and so at this point, I'm going to ask Pastor Joe if he would come up and close with prayer. We open with prayer, we want to close with prayer. So thank you, Pastor Joe. Thank you so much, Brother Mel. You know, the Bible says to give honor to whom honor is due and to know Dr. Mel Siegelian Sr. is to love and appreciate him. So let's uh, let's do this. Come on, I see hands. I see hands raised back there in agreement with that. So let's just put our hands together and thank the Lord for all of His love and hard work, passion, dedication, His commitment to the Lord and to you guys. And when I saw those people, are our passion, you know, my first thought was, you know, that's what God says to. He says, the people in this room, you guys are my passion. And the word passion comes from a word that means suffering. And, you know, oftentimes our purpose in life is found at the place where love and pain intersect. And, of course, we know how much that God loved us, that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. The ultimate suffering, the ultimate sacrifice, but it was out of a heart of love. And I thought about this as we get ready to, uh, to close in prayer. Some of the greatest doctors and nurses that I've uh, been, been blessed to go to over the 51 years of my life, they all had one thing in common. They asked me the right questions at the right time, and then they took the time to genuinely listen to my answers hear my heart, hear my words as they observed me, and then make the correct diagnosis or prescribe the right subsequent activities based upon the answers that I gave. So if that is how incredible physicians, doctors, and nurses like you all operate, how much more so our great physician, the Lord. So here's what I want you to do. I want you guys to, uh, to close your eyes. I know you've had a very full day, an amazing day. Your minds are full. You're excited about the information that you have received. But this could be the greatest moment that happens today and perhaps the rest of your life. So here's what I want to do. When I was praying and thinking about this moment earlier today in the office, I kept thinking about the incredible bedside manner 
of great doctors and nurses, and they would ask the right questions from a heart that cares, from a heart of love. And so I'm going to ask some questions, but what I want you to do, I want you to imagine that the great physician is right in front of you. It could be a prescriptive visit. It could be a preventive visit. It could just simply be a checkup, or he could see something on the inside that really needs to change and may need to change right now in an urgent way. So here's my first question to you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Just you in the presence of the Lord. Great physician eases up to your bedside right now. One of his names in the Old Testament is Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Holy Spirit is also called our comforter. So here's the first question. If you have heard the gospel of salvation, the message, who Jesus is, what he's done for you, if you simply heard the message before in your life, I want you to slip your hand up and then slip it right back down. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, that's everyone. If the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the creator of the universe, the one who breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life and he became a living being, the one who put breath inside of our body, if you have accepted who Jesus is, what he's done, you have repented and surrendered your heart and life to him before I want you to raise your hand. That's amazing. You can put your hands back down unless you want to keep it up in praise to him. That's okay. I can see that some of you just want to, want to stay lifted. That's amazing. Next question. If you've never given your heart to the great physician before, you've never had a heart transplant, if you will, in exchange your heart for his but the scalpel of his word is cutting away and removing some things called sin. And you want to receive his forgiveness right now and repent, ask him into your heart. I want you to raise your hand, please. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I see those hands. You can keep those hands up. I don't always do this, but I feel like the Lord was directing me to do this as well. If you feel like that you've done this before, but you've fallen so far away that you're not sure if you're in right standing before the Lord. Righteousness simply means to be in right standing before God the Father because you've accepted the blood sacrifice of his son Jesus. Maybe you have fallen away, whatever you want to call it. You're not sure about your salvation, but today you want to be sure. I want you to raise your hand, please. Praise God. Hands going up all over, brother man. Okay, you can put those hands down. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10 says, If we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that he died on the cross and that he rose again, we will be saved. For with our heart, we've heard a lot about a physical heart. This is our spiritual heart. For with our heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. It is an out loud prayer. So here's what I'm going to ask us to do right now. I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And I just feel the emotion of the moment. And that's okay. If you feel the comforter coming right now and tears began to flow, the way that you minister a word of life to a patient that brings them hope, and that relief comes and they cry right there, it's okay to release that emotion right now. So here's what I want us to do. We heard about a support team. All of those that are believers in right standing with the Lord, you're the support team. We're going to pray out loud with those that are praying that prayer of salvation today for the first time or a prayer of rededication. 
And I'm just going to lead us in an out loud prayer. You can, you can whisper it. God even hears your heart. But there's something about the voice. I'll say this before I pray. I was looking up the word respiration today. Respire. Re means again. Spire means to breathe. Respire means to breathe again. Spire, S-P-I-R-E. Sounds a lot like the word spirit, doesn't it? So it means to breathe in once again the spirit of God. Ha! That's respire. And it also brings deep rest to us. So I'm going to, uh, I want to I wanna pray and I want you to pray after me. And then I want to pray a time to just seal this up as we've been under the anesthesia of the Holy Ghost, if you will. So let's pray out loud. Support team and those that are giving your heart to the Lord for the first time or those that are rededicating. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for being my great physician. You are my healer. My sin leads to death. But you paid the price suffering for my sin on the cross. I confess that I am a sinner. I believe you died on the cross for me and you rose again three days later. You conquered death. Now Jesus, come and conquer my life. I surrender my heart to you. Make me whole. Make me new. I want to spend forever with you. And forever starts today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, man, I just feel the presence of the Lord. Here's what I want to do. The Bible says, come on, some of you want to clap. The Bible says that all of heaven rejoices when one sinner comes home. Come on, let's go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap. And I just want to pray a final blessing over, uh, over you all. Man, I'm going to read this word over you and then I'm going to pray. It's from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, For we have the living word of God, which is full of energy, like a powerful two edged sword. It will even penetrate, or I like to say, like a scalpel. It will even penetrate to the very core of our being, where soul and spirit, bone and marrow meet. It interprets and reveals the true thoughts and secret motives of our hearts. There's not one person who can hide their thoughts from God for nothing that we do remains a secret and nothing created is concealed, but everything is revealed and exposed and defenseless before his eyes to whom we must render an account. So then we must cling in faith to all that we know to be true. For we have a magnificent king priest, Jesus Christ, the son of God, who rose into the heavenly realm for us and now sympathizes with us in our frailty. He has incredible bedside manner. He understands humanity for as a man, our magnificent king priest was tempted in every way just as we are and yet he conquered sin and now we've allowed him to conquer us. So now we come freely and boldly to where love is enthroned to receive mercy's kiss and discover the grace we urgently need to strengthen us in our time of weakness. Let's close in prayer. Father, I thank you, Lord, that even as you breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life and he became a living being in Genesis 2, 7, Lord, and, and then again in John 20, 22, Jesus, you breathed on the disciples and you said, receive the Holy Spirit. We thank you for breathing your breath into our physical lungs at creation, at birth, but also into our spiritual lungs daily for some and for others today for the first time. Let us continue to inhale you and let us exhale all the toxins of this world that try to uh, infiltrate our bodies 
and prevent us from fully leave, from fully living the way that you want us to live. Lord, I thank you for these amazing sons and daughters that are that are here today. Lord, when you told Moses to go to Pharaoh to say, let my people go. Moses said, who should I tell them when I go to my own people, the Israelites, who should I tell them sent me? You said, tell them I am that I am has sent me. And Lord, I know in Hebrew, those 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 letters for the name I am. Y-H-W-H. Many of the people in this room have heard the name Yahweh or heard Jehovah. But Lord, the Y-H-W-H, that's yeah, wah, yeah, wah, Those are the sounds. It sounds like breathing in and breathing out. The creator of the universe, the breath of God. Lord, every time these physicians and nurses put the stethoscope on a patient and listen to the breath coming in and out. They're listening to the sound of creation speaking the name of the creator of Yahweh. So Lord, we thank you for your breath in our lungs. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise on you. Continue to refresh our spirits, our minds, our bodies, and Lord, I thank you for those in this room that have accepted the high calling that you've placed on their lives to bring healing, hope, wholeness, and wellness to everyone they come in contact with. Lord, I pray that you would provide for them financially. I pray that you would bless their families, their marriages, their children, those that have sacrificed, that have given up so much for them to be in this room. I pray that you would bless them right now and let them know how pleased you are with them and the family sacrifice it takes to be in this in this position. And so, Lord, we thank you that in urgent, desperate times around us, you've given us hope. You've given us life. You've given us courage. Most of all, you've given us your love so that we can release that to everyone we come in contact with. We receive it now. And we go in the power of your spirit in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. amen.